Let's get into main topic number one. And our first main topic today gets submitted to us by Imran Islam, who writes, Variety has reported that DC Films president Walter Hamada has re-upped his deal with Warner Brothers and will serve as DC Films president until at least the end of 2023. Personally, I think since he's come on board, he's done wonders for the DCEU. The report also went on to say that because of Ray Fisher's public dispute with Hamada, his tenure as the DCEU as cyborg is now over. What are your thoughts? Okay, thanks a lot for writing that in, man. And uh, listen, we're gonna we're gonna save the the Ray Fisher part of this story for the next topic because that will be the next topic we talk about. But for now, let's let's focus on the Walter Hamada part here. You know, ever since the day they brought in Walter Hamada on uh, into Warner Brothers, there was a transformation that happened there. There was a transformation that happened there. And it was a positive transformation. Everybody has very, very short memories. But let's go back just a couple of years ago. You know, the, the DCU was in a bit of a mess. They had made films that I liked, particularly Man of Steel. I like Batman versus Superman, things like that. But the reality was their films were underperforming. Half the audiences hated them. Half the critics hated them. And it it was getting to be kind of messy. There was a lot of talk, including on this show, about maybe they should just reboot and all this kind of stuff. Walter Hamada came in. They made a change. And he first said, we're going to change focus. We're going to you know, we're going to focus more on making individual good films first. We're going to reestablish our grounding. And in that time, you know, we've had the first billion dollar DCEU film in Aquaman. That was, I quite enjoyed. Rob, you and I saw that one together. I still remember you and I came out of the AMC Universal City Walk. We saw that and and we had just had such a good time. You liked it even more than I did, if yeah, I remember. I, I couldn't believe just how... I felt like I was watching my favorite movie if I was an eight-year-old. Yeah, I mean, I mean it just... It, it, I just couldn't believe how they embraced the fantasy of it all. And I that was the thing that I responded to most. I'm like, I can't believe I'm seeing this. Right. And I, I loved it all. I loved it all. Look, was it like the Snyder vs. Aquaman? Uh, no. But it was something that was new and something I couldn't believe I was watching. And I had a great time. Yeah, and so... You had you now had DC with a billion dollar film under its belt. I loved Shazam. I thought Shaz it didn't have the same financial windfall that Aquaman did, but Shazam was charming and funny and entertaining, and it was just a big win. The critics enjoyed it. The audiences enjoyed it, all that kind of stuff. You know, with that focus on standalone films, we had a Joker movie come out that won Academy Awards and was another billion dollar film. Now, listen, under Hamada, they've also had. You know, the fabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, which I didn't like too much. And we also just had Wonder Woman 84, which to me was a bit of disappointment. But the fact is, they are in a healthier place right now than they've been. And as a result, the big wigs over Warner Brothers have re-upped. And he's going to be there for another three years. This is what we get from the good folks over at Variety who writes, Walter Hamada has signed a multi-year deal extension to remain president of DC Films in Insiders Tell Variety. The extension is through 2023, one individual familiar with the talks noted. The studio is announcing the deal imminently, so I expect we're going to see an official announcement coming from uh, coming from Warner Brothers any time now. Hamada will continue to report to Warner Brothers Pictures Group Chairman Toby Emmerich, no surprise there. The label is responsible for bringing all of DC superheroes canon to screens and streaming. He is... Your big kahuna when it comes to the DC world. He is in charge of everything that's going to be on movie screens, of everything that's going to be on HBO Max streaming, all that kind of stuff when it comes to the DC universe. Is, this is the thing. And he's just getting started. We, we have seen part one of his plan. And I think for the most part, it has been effective. It has worked. A couple of stumbles, absolutely. But they're just getting started. And so for me, Rob, when you look at Warner Brothers... One of the things that a lot of the people on the outside observing Warner Brothers, particularly when it comes to their DC universe, has been it's been chaotic for a long time, right? A lot of changes always happening. They've been very reactionary. This person's in that position. All of a sudden, there's somebody else, blah, blah, blah. For them to bring in a Walter Hamada, who's been there now for a bit, 
They've had some success. And now they're saying, you know what? We are bringing consistency now to what we're doing. We are stabilizing what we are and what we're doing. And listen, they may be make more mistakes in the future, but I think extending Walter Hamada at this point was the smart thing to do. I think this is a good move. Rob, you heard about this. What's your take on the extension of Walter Hamada there? I think it's absolutely a good move. I, I have to tell you, you know, watching him, I, he spoke at the first big DC fandom event. Yeah. And really, really smart guy. And um, I really like what he had to say. He 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 was exactly, he seemed to me to be the exact kind of studio executive that you want in charge of these beloved franchise properties. He seemed thoughtful. Uh, he really knew his stuff. And um, uh, I, I think, DC is in good hands. The proof's in the pudding. I mean, who would have thought Joker would have made a billion dollars? Who would have thought that that movie would have done what it did? Well, Walter Armada probably did. And uh, same with Aquaman and Shazam. So yeah. I think proof's in the pudding. Here's the funny thing about Armada with Joker. Hamada himself talked about how he he wasn't really big on the idea of doing Joker. He didn't really quite get it about like whether or not it would work. But at the end of the day, he did want some standalone stuff. He wanted to experiment with making things outside of regular universe things, which Joker was, it was an Elseworlds thing. And he wanted, it was right in line with his philosophy. He wanted them to do strong standalone films. And so even though, you know, he didn't get it, he says in his own words, I didn't get it. He didn't get what they were going for in Joker, but he knew it was the type of film that they wanted to focus on, greenlit it anyway. That is bold leadership. When you when you look at it and go, you know what? I'm not even sure I get what you're trying to do, and I'm not totally sure this will work. But it is in line with the philosophy that I think we need right now. Go ahead. And and the, and they reaped it, man. They absolutely reaped it. So it's going to be interesting. And listen, we don't know what's going to happen. Maybe the next three years of DC will be complete, utter disaster. Maybe it'll be a glorious era for them. We don't know. Time will tell. But for now... I think this was a smart move. Question is, guys, what do you think about them extending Walter Hamada there over at DC? Maybe you think this is a good move. Maybe you think this is a bad move. Does it make you hopeful? Does it make you anxious? What are your thoughts right now? Jump into the comments section below and leave your opinions there. All right, guys.